Well, it has been quite a year for our first guest. His latest album, Tickets to My Downfall, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. That's right. <laughs> and he just won an American Music Award for Favorite Rock Artist. He is someone that we all just love so much. Oh, and he's a budding nail entrepreneur and artist as well. Please welcome someone I've been so excited to meet and talk to. It's Machine Gun Kelly! <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so excited. So your new nail collection, mm. Undone Lacquer. Yeah, uh, this is the one I'm thinking. I like... By the way, what are you wearing? Because this looks so interesting. Is that this? That's this. I was I was bored. This is also this was in the dark. My like my my bedroom's very dark. There's not lights in there, so it's like it's kind of like I was just like waving it around, and this is what we turned out with. So I don't look at mine, but. I love this one. I love all of them. By the way, I'll take different colors too. I'm so excited. I'm also, I'm like having a really weird day, so I just want you to, I don't want to come off like I'm cold or I'm like shy. I'm just, I'm a little insular and I'm just having an odd day. You're in a really safe space. Um, the other day I walked in here and I started crying um, at the beginning of the intro. We started here in a pandemic and everybody was terrified. And I think this show, this space, was born in a time where we get to keep it very real and be honest. Maybe you can feel that in the room and feel safe. I think I'm new to being vulnerable outside of songs. So it's like, like I see a, a lot of pictures of me um, and there's like smiles on them and I'm always like, it's just weird though because I didn't feel good at all that day. And I, I kind of am sick of smiling on days when I don't feel like smiling and I feel like this odd pressure because I don't want um, like my fans to think that I'm taking something for granted. So if like I accept an award and I'm like super smiley but behind the scenes I was really there was like stuff going on or I, I didn't feel, I don't know. I, like I, a lot of what I do is for other people and I, I haven't given myself the, the time to just accept that it's okay to not be okay. So I, I, but I didn't just, I, my whole point is I just didn't want to bring that into the show. I'd love to talk about funny stuff and anything that you have for me, I would love to just like, I would love to just get out of what I'm, what I'm doing and like. Make... I don't mean to sound creepy, but I like you so much more. <laughs> Thanks. I really do. In fact, we were just talking about where different people were from, and someone was like, why do you know Utah? And I was like, I went there to go change my life. And I just, you know, I went through a really painful divorce, and I, I wasn't doing very well. And I just wanted to go talk to some people on how to pull myself out of a hole. And I had these two kids that I had to fight for, and um, I needed help, so I started reaching out to different people, and eventually I really made some big sweeping changes in my life. And um, I got I got on a, a whole new track, not back on track, but a brand new one that I helped build with other people asking for support. And like, I, I'm all over the place too. You really are in the right space. <laughs> Who do you like go to for support when you're feeling like this? Well, my girl is really centered and kind of was like the one who encouraged me to face my past and stuff and and pick out what it is that that I'm running from and why I like put on those smiles that I don't want to wear and stuff like that. And so that that was big for me. And I, I think also I was like I was just walking behind my daughter in the airport the other day and like she just has this walk it's this pure like bounce she's so excited for life like she's so young in her life and i've experienced so much in my life i just pray to every god that exists that like she keeps that bounce forever and doesn't like no one interferes with that and that she like that i always get to stand back and watch her have that bounce like i will take any amount of torture that it 
that would come her way if it can just be on me so that she can keep that forever because that's something that it, it's like it's worth living for to see that you know she's so like her voice is so sweet and it's not tainted with like what the world has to offer and anyway remember when you were in 50 first dates <laughs> in love with my children. I never knew what life or love was until I was born the day they were. They changed everything for me. And whatever experiences I had or went through, they just made me think, I have to figure this out and, <laughs> and, and become a strong, wise person for them. And now my daughter, the other day I got lost driving and I was just flipping out behind mm. the wheel and my daughter was like, mom, you need to take a deep breath and calm down. Yeah. And I was like. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I just was so grateful to her for being like now the roles are reversing. Yeah, no, I'm that's like, a, she's, she's like my mom. What was the last thing your daughter told you that like was smarter than what you would have said or done? The other day I, I had to witness myself being a rule follower for the first time and her breaking a rule for the first time. I was like, oh God, what's happening? I was at the, uh, we, I took her to Greece and uh, her, Megan and I went to the Parthenon and uh, we went to Acropolis and we got up there and I made the stupid mistake of like looking at the section that's like restricted and, and I was like, I bet all the cool stuff's in there. And <laughs> Megan was like, well, shouldn't we go? And I was like, nah, probably not. I watched The Mummy and National Treasure and all the people that touch things that aren't supposed to be touched and watched it go really bad. And uh, she was like, well, Casey, do you want to go? And I was like, and Casey was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, God, I'm just going to stay here. And they went across the ropes and then, like, the door burst open. They were like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, and they screamed and, like, ran away. And we got kicked out the Parthenon. But it was, uh, yes! but uh, it's a proud moment. There was also, like, a proud moment was, like, this isn't a proud moment. But there was, uh, I got a call one time. Her school was like, hey, so, you know, your daughter got into a, th a thing with this boy. And I was like, what happened? And they were like, the boy was talking bad about you. And I was like, good job. Don't ever do that again, but I love you so much. I know. I'm such a, like, a rebel, and I'm trying to get it so right with these girls. Yeah, me too. But, like, I grew up, you know, like a ruffian, and I sometimes I'm like, oh, you just want to get it so right this time, but, like, you know, leopards don't totally change their spots. Mm. Um, so it's always like striking that interesting balance. Um, I'm really humorous with them. I definitely swear in front of them accidentally. Oh my God, I love when people come and they like say the word damn or something. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, sorry, do you know what I just said? Like I, eight uh, times? Yes, before. exactly. I also um, pull the car over and like pee in the bushes all the time. Cool. <laughs> And because I don't cool. want to bother going into a Dude, gas station, right? No, it's like nothing's better than an outside pee. We call it sneaky pee. Mm -hmm. And so I'll literally pull over the car, and the kids are like, nah, sneaky pee again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't you love when it's cold outside and you're like, oh, dude, like, 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 it's like, like in a place like this. Yes, and like, it does. Yeah. Here's a question that okay, yeah, goes yeah. back to your other thing. Like, when you are smiling, but you don't feel like it, how have you accepted that about yourself? I can't convince myself. Like, I, yeah, I'll walk back from this interview. This is, this is how I, it'll go. I'll walk upstairs after this is done and I'll go, I sucked. Didn't I suck? It was just, I suck. like, and then, like, uh, yeah, it's just, is this what, like, Maury was like? Because I feel like... <laughs> I've, I've, this is the first audience I've ever witnessed that's done anything besides like, like this is the first one. This is the first audience I've ever seen someone go no. Or yeah, like, I'm telling yeah. you, we literally encourage them like if you want to hiss, yeah, moan, yeah, 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 yeah. boo, uh, like we we keep it real here. I'm incapable. That's why I kind of asked you about the advice about the smile because I am incapable 
of not being myself. And that's a lot of different things, but it's very real and very honest. I like the truth of people. I like the colors and the light and the dark and the in between the chiaroscuro, if you will. I, I like will. I like to keep it real. I, but I don't know who I am. I don't I don't know I don't I don't know what exists outside of the the paper and pen and the recordings that I make. Like that was that's who I have been comfortable with the whole time, right? Do you so, think that that is the real you in those writings and with that pen and with the guitar? Is that a part of you? For sure, those are my stories. Like that's that is me. But I I can't exist my entire life as a song, right? Like the song's over after three minutes and fifteen seconds. So I have to. What do I do with the rest of the twenty four hours that I have to exist? I was born with the umbilical cord around my neck. You are. So even from the beginning, like my life hasn't made sense because it was already, you know, trying to be taken away from me from the second I came out. And then you proceed and then you're in fifth grade or you're in whatever it is. And, you know, I had leg hair before everybody else and everyone was like, that's weird, ew. And I was like skinny and taller than everybody else. And I like had to figure things out by myself. And I figured them out, not from encouragement, but rather being made fun of or being attacked and then I ran away to my headphones and then you know when uh, Tupac becomes who your like advice is coming from and stuff like that you uh, you know who, or whoever is in your headphones like in, in movies and stuff like that those are they almost seem like it, you, you, you engulf yourself in a fantasy world and so that means that you don't accept who you are in real life because you just want to be what these what is in fantasy. I too was like left out on my own and I made a lot of mistakes in my own parenting. Um, ones that I still have like triggers to this day of like doing to my own kids, which I fight really hard not to ever do. Um, and I think when you grow up with like dysfunctional parents, you're like, oh God, I don't want to grow up to be that dysfunctional parent. And I will do anything I can to like fight against that repeating of history. Um, but I'm so glad because it's the only life I know. And whatever it is that has happened to you in your life, I think you have also turned it into incredible art. Um, you have found a channel. I don't know if things were meant to happen the way they were meant to happen, but I see that you've done so much with it and made such a life for yourself and something that you don't even just keep to yourself, but you share with other people. I, I think you've done a really good job um, at figuring out how to take care of yourself and putting beautiful things out into the world. It's interesting to know that's your perspective because um, I like you. I like you so much. And if it's any consolation, like I had to eat a bowl of macaroni and cheese because I had a hard day at work because, you know, I, I'm still learning on this job. And I, I just eviscerate myself all the time. So I understand. Yeah, but don't. Don't let yourself like get in the way of the things that people love about you, which is like, uh, you know, we're we're scared to have a learning curve in our life because we're the comments make us feel like we're supposed to have it right at that very moment. And what they don't realize is that life is growth. Like if, if someone has a desire to grow and they they show it and we should encourage it. It's odd that. I don't know. Sometimes the world disappoints me. I, I don't. I don't mean to bring that into this. I know my publicist is back there, just like, what are you doing? You're supposed oh, yeah. to talk I'm about sure nails. Your publicist, I, your publicist is probably like. Uh -huh. I just, my aesthetic eye is killing me. I gotta redo this hand. Okay, right. please. Yeah, um, by the way, okay. So if you can see those things in me and your daughter, are you gonna be able to see that in yourself? Because everything you just said about all of us. I see in you. Excuse me, hold on. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry, but I had to do that. Uh, 
I, um, I really hope so. You know, I want to I wanna stick around to see how this story ends, so. I think you're holding the pen. I think you are the writer. Yeah. Speaking of writing, <laughs> how do you like that for a segue dovetail? Maybe I don't suck at this job so badly. Will you tell me about this book, Hotel Diablo? Yeah, I am a huge lover of graphic novels. I think it's an escape into a fantasy world, not just leaving it up to your mind for those who can't read words and put visuals to them, but it kind of does, does both. There's no superheroes and capes in this comic. There's no, I mean, I think it's almost just like a reflection of what we've been talking about. When you get like dark and deep, does Megan go like, oh honey, or is she like lighten up? Oh no, she's, she's the most compassionate person ever, but I think like my dark is just so dark, she's like, oh God. <laughs> like, she, but no, she's, she's super compassionate. She's the nicest person I've ever met. And like, she, she loves me for me and all my crazy, so I. What tactic does she use to sort of open one up that we could all benefit from? Cause we're all trying to do that for each other. Exorcism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some real demons in there that we gotta get out. I have literally Reagan upstairs. Like, can someone bring her down so I can pr show and prove? Can I ask how you guys met? Did you get set up on a date? We were filming a movie, and uh, which I, which ironically I took because the only the only reason I took the movie was because they were like your scenes with Megan Fox, and I was like. I'll take the movie. And, um, <laughs> but I stayed outside the trailer and my gut is always right and I'm grateful for it because for some reason I knew she would invite me to lunch and then all of a sudden so someone came over and they were like, Megan wants to know if you wanna have lunch in a trailer. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so surprised. Yeah, absolutely. I had like a whole bag packed like, <laughs> like and um, I went in there and uh, she said, how do you feel? And I said, I'm lost. And she said, let's find you. And I was like, <gasps> it killed me. And I was like, she, I mean, she, she was Cupid and I was, I was. You got hit by her arrow. Right in the. Um, by the way, I have someone here who wants to visit. Oh, thank you. You mentioned exorcist. <laughs> thank you, Daniel. Oh my God, hi. Oh my. Oh, should we do? I, I, I relate, <laughs> I feel you. So every morning, um, Reagan greets us in the uh, writer's room because this was what my daughter wanted for Halloween. And then I bought it and I brought it and then she was like, okay, I changed my mind, it's too scary. So now she's been living in our office. <laughs> well, since you're here. Um... <laughs> keep being that, keep breaking down those walls Keep making your music. Keep feeling your feelings. Smile when you want to. Don't when you don't want to. Make that be okay for other people. Maybe your discomfort will be a gateway and an open door and a bridge for someone else who might feel that feeling but doesn't know what to do with it. That's, that's why I named it Undone. Because I was like, you're not, you shouldn't be done like changing. You shouldn't be done evolving. And it's like as simple as nail polish can seem. It's still like action of meditating or breathing is also simple. It's like, all I have to do is breathe, but it is wild like to see what breathing, like deep breaths or like those things. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely blew my mind what that one word has done. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be done. I, I, I watched my father change like right before he passed he, cause he wasn't done and like he wasn't scared to like make a step even in the age that he was and in the state that he was. And like the coolest thing my dad did, I remember like for so many years, I hid my tattoos from him. I had been tattooed since I was 14 years old, but 
uh, and I revealed them when I was 18 or 19, something like that. Like, I mean, I, he got a playful. I was like, I have a baby on the way, and also, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> and, uh, but he was on the hospital bed, and like, <laughs> he like lifted up the gown, and he had a tattoo on his hand. And I was like, it was a Jesus tattoo, of course. But uh, I, I thought it was so rad. He wasn't d done becoming the person that he wanted to be until it was his time. And that's maybe why his time came, because like he find, he, there was one last step he had to take, and he took it, and that was fire. I think we have a lot to talk about, like, with our dads, by the way. I just can't stress to, about what my publicist is back there thinking. Oh. I can't, He's like, passed out, uh, by like, the way. She's going to be like... I don't know if you know this about me, but um, I was actually going to be a director, and then I had directed a movie, and it was called Whip It about roller derby, because I just... Thank you. I love um, the world of roller derby. It's such a perfect metaphor for life. Like, we create these little names and we pretend to be these little alter ego superheroes and we want to do something badass, but we want family and camaraderie and showmanship and to break out of our shells. And um, I just thought that's where my life was going. And then I had two kids and I kind of wanted to stop acting and change my life so that I could be a parent for them and be present. And then I didn't know where my life was taking me. I got divorced and finally found myself here in this beautiful space that is the happiest I've been in so many years of my life. But I am a filmmaker and editing is one of my uh, strong suits. And if you don't mind, I would love to take this time we spent together and craft something really beautiful and very tailored and thoughtful about who you are and true to this time. My goal is to surprise you with, I, I want to make you happy with it. And, and I think I really know how to do that. Okay. And you, we have this beautiful it, clay and I'm gonna make this sculpture out of it. And I'm really, really excited because I think I know how to make something very true to you. Okay. Actually hit the things we're supposed to talk about, <laughs> but find our way through this dynamic, cool approach that you took. And I can't wait to show you what I make. Should we take the cameras backstage when I walk in the, and my publicist is like. <laughs> totally. I just, it's like. Because it, the, the funniest part, this is, this is also funny. I go, she, she looked at me before I walked out of here. She was like, all right, based off of the last 15 minutes from being around you, <laughs> do you really want to go out there? And I was like, dude, I'm not going to bring any of this out there. Like, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> anyway, what would your roller derby name In be? In real life? Yeah. Because I was Smashly Simpson. Oh, that's hilarious. In the movie. <laughs> We had Babe Ruthless and Rosa Sparks. What would yours be? Uh, oh, Brad Hitt. Brad Hitt? Yes. Now that's a derby name. Yeah, I'm Brad Hitt. You're Brad Hitt, and I am Lucille Brawl. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah, that's Brad the one. Brad Hitt and Lucille Brawl. Yeah. Uh, uh. Uh. That's yeah, hard. I'm sorry mom to leave to... you out. All due respect, I never want to see you again ever in my life. <laughs> she just wants to be loved, too. Will you stand up with me? Yeah, of course. I have to tell you, I was excited to meet you, and I thought that I really liked you. <laughs> She's like, and now you got to get out. I never want to see you again. And now I have to tell you, I love you. Thanks. 